Yes! The official theme song of Tuesday. The Tuesday Night Titans are back with some more craft beer and baseball. Yeah. Mmm. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey, Michael here for Beer Baseball Blog, the adventures of craft beer and baseball. This is the Beer Baseball Blogcast, episode 68, can it be, for August 17th, 2021. Wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. And as always, we'd appreciate if you subscribe and turn on those notifications. Some housekeeping before we start. Some people call him the Space Cowboy. Some people call him the Gangster of Love. Thank you to uh, Patreon super supporter, Cowboy Jack Durango, the good cowboy. Are you out there? Thank you for your contribution to the Beer Baseball blog on the power hitter level. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for pinch hitting uh, last week, jumping in the Beer Baseball blogcast. You're always a blast. We're going to definitely have the cowboy back. Uh, you know, he's always welcome on anything Beer Baseball. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have him back. Thank you so much. Thank you to Patreon super supporter Rachel Elnar for her contribution to the Beer Baseball blog on the power hitter level. Uh, Rachel's uh, San Francisco Giants uh, doing well, much to the chagrin of the NL West. Uh, somehow they're still hanging in there. So uh, thank you, Rachel, for participating. Thank you to Patreon super supporter Scott Lost for his contribution on the cleanup hitter level. Check out his comics and merchandise at accidentalaliens.com. If you would like to become a Patreon supporter and helping out the Beer Baseball blog, check out our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. You can also support us by buying stickers, buttons, and beer coasters on our Etsy page. Search beer baseball on etsy.com. And here is the lineup card for today. Batting leadoff is the VP of content development here at the Beer Baseball blog. In house, you are you are literally in house. You're not you're not on on the road. Angela Trinidad, welcome. Hey, Michael. Hey everyone, thank you guys for tuning in. Sixty-eight episodes, sixty-nine episodes strong. If you include our um, pilot episode, certainly excited to be here. Excited uh, to interact with all of you guys. I see you guys are already. Uh, being very interactive in the chat um, and excited to learn some baseball history today learn uh, and i'm very excited to see if i can continue my uh, winning ways with baseball card sharks and hopefully that carries carries over from the hoppy hour and uh, looking forward to some baseball trivia so excited to be here tonight yes absolutely and uh yeah we, we we've had some fun with the uh the uh the card shark that's right you you actually won and you weren't here Yep. Yeah, I was, so, well, so, I was I was present for when I played, yes. but I wasn't present to uh, know that I won. But I was tuning in at that point. That's right. It, it, usually they have that stipulation where you have to be there to uh, to win. Uh, that's, but, all, but, that's only for raffles. Okay. That's, that's right. That's right. We we wait, we waive that clause. Card. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, and Ke Kevin Lyon is in traffic, and he should be here uh, shortly. So um, before we get into what we're drinking, let's go to the. Uh, Let's go to the chat. Uh, Coach McCormick. Uh, yeah, drink up. Let's go. Let's do this. Bubble Pug. Uh, my uh, my Cardinals are playing your Brewers tonight. Uh, so uh, I think they're down 2 nothing already. So um, thank you, Bubble Pug, for joining us tonight. David, always a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Ian, thank you so much. Hello, hello. Yes, thank you. And uh, yeah, uh, Rachel is awesome. Yes, <laughs> I, I figured that you would like that and that she's a Giants fan for sure. Uh, Chad M, thank you for joining tonight as well. All right, so uh, let's get to it. No Cowboy Jack Durango. That's, that's uh, you know, the, the, the chat is lukewarm at this point. Uh, so, yeah, we, we, need, we need the Cowboy my, to mix it up. You know, my, my guess is, is uh, Cowboy Jack's pregame turned into in-game. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes. That that, te that tends to happen, and and uh, and much like uh, whenever let's see, whenever there's a guy, whenever there's a, like a New York trip, and it's like a day game. I remember like you know just following the baseball. I remember guys would be up with dehydration, and uh, what what that always told me was that they had a hard night the the night before, <laughs> and they were actually scratched because of dehydration. Um, it's kind of a the wink wink way of saying uh, yeah they had they had a hard night last night. 
Um, oh, look at this. There he is. Boom, boom, shake the room. Daddy's here. Love it. Love it. So thank you, Cowboy, for, uh, for joining. Uh, let's get back to uh, this slide. Angelo, the question I love to ask you every week, what are you drinking? So I am very excited to try this. Um, and uh, I know you were very excited when I told you this is what I was drinking tonight. Yep. Um, this is uh, from Mother Earth Brewing, which is one of uh, one of our favorite breweries here at the Beer Baseball Blog. Uh, they're, I guess, uh, they're, they're um, mainly known in the mainstream for the uh, Cali Creamin, uh, mm -hmm. vanilla cream ale, uh, and the orange creamsicle version of that as well. Uh, but when I was shopping my local Trader Joe's, what really drew me to this beer was the artwork, as you can see. Um, and this is a, um, uh, it's a hazy IPA called Cognitive Aerobics. And the artwork really drew me to this. And when I, and the, the re and a couple reasons why it drew me to the can, number one, because of the artwork on the outside, but the print of the name, it looks very similar to the GI Joe logo. Yes. So that's why it really drew me in. So I picked it up and saw it was a hazy pale, uh, hazy IPA. So those of you that follow the show closely know that hazy IPAs are uh, my absolute favorite. And so I decided to pick this one up. This one is a 7.2 ABV uh, with a IBU of 28. And it's um, brewed with a combo of New Zealand and Pacific Northwest hops, lending a huge aroma full of citrus and fruit candy. Uh, peach rings, orange marmalade, and lemon zest are just a few adjectives that describe the nose on this choice. Lactose-free, West Coast hazy. So I'm uh, very excited to try this. So if you could see it, it's oh, wow. see the haze there. Super very cloudy. Easy. And um, yeah, I mean, what's different with this hazy West Coast as opposed to other hazy West Coast, like we've had some from Coronado Brewing Company, a lot of those have lactose in it. So this does not have lactose. So um, I can certainly smell the citrus and the peach primarily um, uh, really uh, resonates as I was pouring it out of the can. Um, Ian said it must taste like cotton candy. Well, let's, let's find out. Yeah. So not quite like cotton candy. Um, it's the I don't taste the peach as much as I smell the peach. Mm -hmm. The citrus really rings through in the taste. Um, very juicy. Um, a lot more juicy than a typical West Coast IPA, probably because there's no lactose. So um, very, very good. Yeah, de yeah de I actually definitely not as, definitely not as crisp or refreshing as a juicy, hazy IPA would be, but it's definitely very good. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And, and I was excited. I mean, this is one of my uh, kind of uh, back when I was kind of going regularly to like Whole Foods, um, I actually uh, found out about them. There was they actually had one called the Buku IPA. And uh, that was kind of like a, a, a go to uh, six pack for me um, back when I was kind of go going there regularly for for uh, that and 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 then they had some other variations, the Cali Creamin, which is uh, is more a favor of you and Kevin. Um, we, it, it's funny we we talked about it like the vanilla part of it um, is not so much great for me or the other like the orange sickle uh, flavor, but um, uh, I did I do like the more hoppy flavor. But I think that we're all um, we're all on board when it comes to citrus. So anything citrus, uh, we're really enjoying. And, um, uh, but I mean, but also like, I, I noticed that you're getting into more hoppy, also getting more, ex uh, um, more, you're experimenting a bit more with this and, and then also getting into like kind of the background, uh, of this, I, I was looking at it as well. And I think there's been a lot of artist collaborations, um, as well. So like, you know, uh, I, I think the artwork for this is, is made by a, a certain person as well, I, I believe. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, and with that, Kevin Lyon. Do it. There he is. Hey. Hello. Hey. Yeah. I know. I, 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 I'm I, really I, about to restart my computer because you were like sounding choppy. I'm like, I hope it's not my computer. I just walked in. Uh, it's right. a little. It's a little bit choppy. Okay. Well, we'll we'll, we'll, give, it we'll give it a go. We'll give All it right. a go. We'll give it a go. Well. Yeah, oh. it's time to put on makeup. It's time to dress up right. Kevin, 
What are you having tonight? Oh yeah, yeah this is this is looks very interesting. Uh, a certain man named Michael Mondragon got this got one of these cans for me recently. So for those of you who grew up in the maybe late eighties, early nineties, is obviously a parody of the show Twin Peaks. They just changed the floor a little bit, and there's the giant with the drinks. You know, I'm guessing that is the uh, Agent Cooper there as the uh, <laughs> as the Lemonhead. Yeah, and the little, little the little guy. I'll just say that the little guy is a, is a raspberry to make a raspberry lemonade sour ale five percent. That's awesome. I, I, don't yeah, know. I, I need to hashtag you more research. Yeah, eight hundred five. Eight hundred five is, is a craft beer. Yeah, I, I believe that, that. Yeah, that's uh, is that Firestone. Yeah, I, um, uh, I think so. I think uh, Firestone. Okay. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's like they're kind of there's it's kind of like their cores almost. What do you think of the yeah. Sour Peaks? Wow. I know, I'm taking a little sip just to, yeah, visit a place where nothing is what it seems. I'm like, yeah, that's very accurate. Yeah. And mind you, you got to appreciate the woman. Um, at least she's nice enough to cover herself up. This is a family show, obviously. <laughs> you know. Nice. What do you yeah, think, I mean, what do you think like, of it? For me with sours, I can only do like one or two at a time. So this is, it, this is nice. This is nice. Let me tell you that. It's not too tardy, so I don't mind. I don't mind drinking this. I'll buy, I can actually drink this pretty fast, so that's a good yeah, sign. Yeah, I, I noticed that it was. Um, it's kind of. Is, is it five percent ABV? Is that yes? Is that what it, yeah, five. So yes, you know, probably really good. Um, it, it's not too sour. It's just. It's, yeah, as long as not too tardy, too tardy. I, I, I'll be. I'll be good. Usually, otherwise, I gotta really take my time with a sour one. Right. 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 Right on. I, I always, I'm, I'm, I, I have one of these in the fridge, and I will definitely uh, crack it open. I'm looking forward yeah. to it. And plus, I, I, you know, want to, I, I do want to get my glass though, so I want because I want to see what it oh, looks like. Oh, go for it, go for it, and I'll explain my beer. Talk amongst yourselves. Yes, uh, my beer tonight is the Oso oh Under. This is a collaboration uh, with uh, L Smith Brewing Company and Alvarado Street Brewery. Uh, I, I was really interested in the can, um, you know, it, and it's, it's a West Coast style uh, IPA with Aussie and New Zealand hops. So that that would that kind of intrigued me for right there. So definitely the combination of those two hops specifically, um, I guess it was, uh, you know, obviously inspired by uh, Australian uh, beer uh, and they definitely wanted to get that taste. Now, it, it, if they're going for like a West Coast IPA, it's like it's. It, they totally nailed it. Uh, these two hops are like amazing together. I definitely, uh, it actually has, um, so it's a it's a double IPA, but it has Galaxy, uh, also Galaxy, Vic Secret, and Nelson hops as well. Um, but uh, 7.0 uh, ABV and, and uh, surprisingly only 40 IBU. So not oh. too bitter. Um, you know this this smells it, it has a um that kind of citrusy um smell to it that that we already have and it, and I, it already has like i can tell like just an, an amazing taste it reminds me of when we when we go to noble kevin like that mm -hmm. that smell when you first walk into noble yeah. ale works um yeah i forgot i have actually had this i had this oh, on you draft have. yeah but I, what threw me off is um i don't remember where i got it at on draft it mentioning alvarado street which it's funny because when I saw the name Alvarado Street Brewery, I just figured it was a brewery in LA because Alvarado is a major street in the in yeah. the LA area. But it turns out they're from Monterey, so that's quite a distance between these two breweries. So San Diego, right. yeah, and uh, th that's the beauty of, of these collaborations. You know, um, I actually I actually have one um, that's that I'm going to be doing in the future. It's El Segundo and Rip Brewing, uh, R I I P. Um, yeah, they're from uh, Huntington Beach, I believe. Yeah, so um, I'm loving the collaborations. It's definitely, it's it's definitely uh, opened up uh, my my taste palette to other things as well, and, and to other breweries as well. So yeah, and at some point I gotta get you guys. I have a can for each of you too from a collaboration between uh, from Ventura Topa Topa Brewing and uh, Radiant around the corner. Oh, awesome! Oh, that's right, that's right. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot about that one. That's uh, I just so remember good. now because we're on all these collabs. So right you're on. gonna get you're gonna heat, get heat with uh, Cowboy Jack mentioning. That's why, Radiant that's why I realized I never mentioned it too. Just to get the heat. <laughs> well, one day we might get paid uh, in beer uh, for for mentioning Radiant. That that'd be nice, yeah. All right, so let's get to it. This is this day in baseball history for August seventeenth. 
August 17th, 1937, in Cincinnati, the Cardinals beat the Reds 8-6 to in nine innings at Crosley Field. The final out of the two-and-a-half-hour contest is recorded at 12.02 a.m., marking the first time a major league game has ended after midnight. So that, that kind of like threw me for a second. Why would a two-and-a-half-hour game... That doesn't make sense, does it? The yeah. game. What, what did the game start at ten thirty at night? Was there a double header? Was there a double header? It doesn't say. And I, I tried to look this up. It, it was a full game. So, okay. but why? Why would it be a night game starting at ten thirty? Right? Yeah, that's I don't. That's really odd. And I and I'm guessing this is early on in lights because I mean I don't remember when, when was the first game of even like outdoor lighting would have been in the thirties. Right. Right. And so like the whole thing kind of got me going. But if you look up, and, and, and this wasn't the reason, but yeah. if, you, if you look up, I, would look, I looked up Crosley Field 1937, and it kept on uh, saying Crosley Field 1937 flood. And I'm like, oh, okay. So, Ooh, oh, this, wow. Th this was uh, Crosley Field in, uh, in, in uh, January of that year. Oh, my um, goodness. Yeah, and um, wow. it turned out that it snowed and rained so much. It it actually did this, wow. and uh, yeah, pretty bad. So I guess they have a problem with uh, either uh, drainage or something. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so maybe maybe they maybe the prep on the field. I, that's all I can all I can imagine, right? Yeah. Um, but then here's uh, Reds pitcher <laughs> Lee Grissom, um, <laughs> who's rowing across the flooded Crosley Field. Uh, this wasn't that game, but uh, and here obviously. I was, I was ready to like make an easy joke of you, and then you went to the flood thing. I'm like, that just killed what I saw in that first slide of the stadium. <laughs> you after that slide, the first thing I looked, and before you even say what city it was, I'm like, oh, I wish I'd said WKRP. And then I hear you say it's Cincinnati. I'm like, oh, we're so close. So close. <laughs> That's for us old folk. Yes, yes, exactly. The Venus fly off trap, Johnny Fever. Uh, Doctor. Les, Dr. Johnny Fever, yes. To you, sir. Les Nessman. Um, <laughs> August 17th, 1947, the Lowell Orphans, a bankrupt minor league team, moved from <laughs> Lawrence, Massachusetts last month, only draws 85 paying customers to a doubleheader. Uh, by the way, if, it, if, if it, that would have been us, we would have been one of those 85 right there. I know. We, it. Well, I thought we were the orphans. The, orphans. <laughs> Come on. the team's poor performance, which includes a 20 game losing streak, causes a city to evict the New England League franchise from yeah. the alumni field, making it necessary for the club to finish the season on the road. Oh now, God. Okay, so I tried to look up the Lowell Orphans. There is n they have, they have been scrubbed from the internet. I had, there is nothing on them. I can't find a logo. I can't find a picture. Oh. Um, that's why I, uh, I've, I but I actually found this. This is actually Alumni Field, um, and uh, it still exists, and they still play. Now I want you to I want to I want you to pay close attention to the uh, right field line right there. Um, which has to be uh, kind of reverse of what the LA Coliseum uh, is. That, that has to be like 200 feet, like where the road is right there. Mm -hmm. It's right behind, like almost like first base. That's probably like 50 feet. Uh, it might, might even be like 140 feet. Um, <laughs> it's like, what happened? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 as I was looking at that. I'm like, but, but the, the, but the alleys are like crazy on there. So, uh, yeah. but it does still exist, and uh, you wow. can actually see baseball there today. I don't know who plays well, there. Well, there but... was the Lowell Spitters. I don't think. Yeah, but this did. wasn't this wasn't the field they played at. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Well, then, yeah, it uh, looks actually, like like wherever people even sit, it looks like you can fit like 80 people in there. Yeah, yeah. It's Sorry. crazy. It's crazy. And it's right next to a car dealership. Uh, I'm sure yeah. they fouled a few into the uh, new cars or the old uh, used cars, maybe. Now, now, this next one, I could legitimately end on this next one. It is so good. So in the show is uh, a fran and the franchise or end today's show. <laughs> I could shut I could shut down and and you would be happy. But this is, this is one of the guys. This is, this this is one of the great all time bye. baseball stories of all time. In a game oh, yeah. uh, on August 17th, 1957, in a game against New York at Connie Mack Stadium, a foul ball off the bat of Richie Ashburn breaks the nose of spectator Alice Roth, the wife of an editor for Philadelphia's Bulletin. Oh. 
as she is carried off in a stretcher. The Phillies leadoff hitter nails her again during the same at bat. <laughs> That's crazy. A friend of mine talked to me about this, told me about this story like six, maybe six, nine months ago, and I never heard about it. He's like, please don't you're going to talk about it in the show. And I'm like, if it comes up, yeah, sure. <laughs> Bam. It's classic. It's an absolute classic. And I love, I love that it, it was a, a Ripley's Believe It or Not cartoon at one point as well. Which the only thing be better if it was Jack Palance reading that. Yes, I agree. I should have did it. I could have done it in my best Jack Palance, but no one, everybody thought, well, I probably you just had a stroke. You can, you can still do it. You know, we're live now. Don't worry. <laughs> no one will get it. It's too it's Why are you too doing one-armed push-ups? Can you read it? Can you do it in Jack Palance while you do one-armed push-ups? <laughs> uh, Angelo, Jack Palance. Who is he? That's uh, what's his name from um, City Slickers? There you go. Ah, well done. Good job. Well done. Good job. Nicely done. Uh, but he's he he a TV show called Ripley's Believe It or Not. Yeah, that's right. That's why yeah. we're referencing that here. Yes. All right. August 17th, 1966. After tying Jimmy Fox the day before for the most career home runs by a right handed batter, giant slugger Willie Mays passes. Uh, Fox with his uh, 535th homer. The San Francisco center fielder now takes over second place all time, uh, trailing only Babe Ruth's record with 714 at the time. Wow. Um, So he's ahead of Hank at this point. Well, yeah, actually, that makes sense because he started playing about four or five years before Hank. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, uh, uh, it's amazing. And actually, this is not the last time you'll hear about Willie Mays on uh, this day in baseball. Oh. Ooh. August 17th, 1971, during the, a visit to the White House, 21 year old Vita Blue, who is presently 22 and four, um, because, uh, they were visiting because uh, they, they had won the, the world championship the year before. So that's usually what they do when they pass through Washington. Uh, well, wait, wait, wait. That doesn't make sense because they didn't. The, oh, wait. But. The A's didn't. Oh, win. Maybe, maybe, maybe they, maybe they went. Um, I'm, uh, well, it's a 70. No, no, I'm trying to figure out oh, what this is for. No, no, you're, I, I'm, I, I take that completely back. They were probably just going through. Um, uh, you know what? You know what it might have been. Uh, the he had. A, why would it, he? He was. He that? started the All Star game that year. That's what I'm thinking. That might, so it might have been uh, uh, surrounded around that. I, I was under the assumption that, that no, um, if it only was, it was Doc Ellis in, instead of Vita Blue. That would have been amazing. Oh, no. That would have been amazing. Oh, no, Doc, Doc Ellis was the other pitcher. Yeah. Sorry, in that game. Yeah. So, um, but he is, uh, Vita Blue is told by uh, President Nixon that he is the most underplayed p- player in the game. Um, the commander in chief shares the eventual Cy Young Award winner uh, and AL MVP that he would like to negotiate the Athletics Southpaw's next contract, much to the chagrin of Oakland owner Char- Charlie Finley. Oh, I was, I was thinking that. I'm like, well, come on, Charlie <laughs> Finley and Nixon together? Ooh, that'd be quite a doozy. Yeah, he do got an endorsement the by the president. Is, do you know the smiling man is in the background? I'm really curious who that is. I don't. You know, um, I, I, I had his name in my head about who he was, and I, and I was going to read it on the side. I totally forgot about it, but um, uh, I do not know. I keep on wanting to say Ron Farrelly, but that, that I don't know if that's right. I mean, you, it looks. You know what? You might, we might be right on that. I'm not sure. I, I it, it, it's very it's clean possible. cut. That's the first thing I think of. Yeah. Uh, from the seventies, like that. But yeah, yeah. he was on the he was on the A's team then, and later an Angels broadcaster. Oh, that's right. Okay, that's yeah, yeah. I knew Ron Fairley growing up. Yeah, well, he makes a great contrast in this picture. That's for sure. Yes, that's for sure. <laughs> Look at Tricky Dick. My goodness, yes. <laughs> it's, it's a great photograph. Soccer to me. Uh, August seventeenth, nineteen seventy three, at Shea Stadium, forty two year old Willie Mays hits his six hundred and sixtieth. And final oh. home run of his career off Cincinnati Southpaw Don Gullett. The Mets first baseman who played 21 seasons roaming the outfield for the New York Giants before coming home to New York uh, last season is third all time on the home run career list behind Babe Ruth and Hank Aaron. So Hank pass- passed him. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, and I and I want to make special mention of the guy who your eyes probably went to. I know mine did. Uh, this guy right here. Um, who, um, I'm not sure what he's taking a picture of, uh, if you see, he probably has the worst angle, uh, and, uh, of everything and, and not taking a great picture. Um, and actually kind of, uh, uh, you know, if there was Photoshop back then, he would be probably Photoshopped out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a majestic photo. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes. But uh, yeah, uh, way, <laughs> way to get the shot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> August 17th, 1980. George Brett reaches the 400 average mark when he goes four for four in the Royals' eight to three victory over Toronto. The Kansas City third baseman receives a standing ovation from the Royals' stadium crowd of th- uh, 30,693 fans after blasting a bases clearing double in the eighth inning. God, that must have been so fun to watch that that whole year. Of he was he was insane that year. I don't yeah. remember what the his final average ended up being, but it was like. It was about three ninety ish, I believe. Yeah, I yeah, I want to say that it was it was in that area, but yeah, I mean, how exciting! Because yeah, if you don't count the Tony Gwynn season, I think he's the the last guy who's come the closest to the to four hundred, and that's you know forty years ago now. It's crazy. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's something that like um, well, I see. This is nineteen eighty, so uh, wow, it, it's 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 as it's been forty years since yeah since anybody's hit like four hundred and, and 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 done it you know this late in August. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Pretty cool. August 17th, 1984, Pete Rose returns to the Cincinnati lineup for the first time in six years, going two for four, including a single in his first at bat in the team's six to four victory over Chicago at Riverfront Stadium. Charlie Hustle traded by the Expos yesterday in exchange for Kevin. Oh, no. The only (laughs) man, the only man. Traded for Pete Rose. Angelo? Oh my gosh. I can't believe I'm forget. It's a one on one deal? Um there had to be like maybe like money or I don't think so. No, I don't think I think wow, it was really? one, one one for one. I think it was. Wow. He said he was the only man traded for Pete Rose. Oh, I can't believe I'm spacing out on this. He was tra- this traded uh for Infield Tom Lawless. Remember, he hit that home oh, run in in oh, the right. eighty seven series. Oh my gosh, fat flipped. <laughs> wow, what uh, a, what a deal! That like one of the greatest hitters of all time for Tom Lawless. Tom Lawless. Yep. Uh, he also replaces Vern Rapp in the dugout uh, as the club's player manager. That's something you don't see at all anymore either. I would love to see that. He he, he might be the last player manager. I don't know if there's anybody in the major league level since him. I, I don't I don't think that I don't think that there has been no not even close no nope I mean they they were taking uh, like guys with uh, like no baseball experience you yeah. know that uh, not no, no managing experience right, over, right 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 over a player manager it seems it's, it's but that'd be very interesting um, uh, so uh, uh, Pete Rose does it again two years later. August 17th, 1986. This is not the photo of it, uh, but the Reds player manager, Pete Rose, makes his final major league plate appearance, pinch wow. hitting in the eighth inning of a 9-5 to loss to the Padres at Riverfront Stadium. The all-time hit leader uh, will uh, end his 24-year career with a 303 batting average, um, and he is struck out by future Hall of Famer Goose Gossage. Wow. <clears throat> So yeah, and I couldn't find I, I, any I, footage of this, any pictures of it, nothing. That's all right. You know what? He, he doesn't want picture taking this because uh, little birdie told me he, I think he had money on the Padres that day, so that's why he put himself in as a pinch hitter. It's like I'll strike out versus Goose. I'll make it look. I'll make it look good, brother. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> right? Who knows if he if he uh, just had the bat on the shoulder as well? Just didn't even did the, <laughs> didn't even uh, hold up Goose, for anything. Goose even an A six still had some heat, man. Yeah, that's true. That's true. August 17th, 1999, Jesse Orozco sets the major league mark uh, pitching in his 1,000 72nd game, passing Dennis Eckersley on the all-time career appearance list. Oh the God. 43-year-old Baltimore reliever who will finish his 24-year career uh, appearing in 1,252 big league contests retires the only batter he faces on a fly ball to center field in an eight to three victory over Minnesota at Camden Yards. Wow. I, I totally forgot that he uh, ended his career with the Orioles. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? I, I, I had no idea that was when I saw the picture. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it looks like uh, like Tito Santana or something. <laughs> <laughs> Chico. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, two more on the same day. 
Oh, August right. 17th, 2008, during the fifth inning of an 11 to 8 loss to the Twins at the Metrodome, Mariners right-hander R.A. Dickey throws four wild pitches, tying a major league record for wild pitches in one frame. The infamous inning also includes a pass ball um, to Seattle um, uh, catcher Kenji jo- Jojima. Um, and I, this brought or me Kenji. back to a... <laughs> Kenji had no idea what's coming, probably. <laughs> okay, so so it's funny that you bring that up because it reminds me of an old Bob Euchre quote, which I will uh, tell you now. Um, Bob Euchre said it best when he says, the way to catch a knuckleball is to wait until it stops rolling, then pick it up. <laughs> there you go. So that says it all about the knuckleball. So yeah. uh, I'm surprised this, this didn't happen more. I remember... Um, I, I forget what, who the catcher was, but that I remember that the catchers had to have like an oversized glove even to catch a knuckleball. It was like it was that elusive. It was, it was insane. No one wanted to catch the knuckleball pitchers, uh, probably because it was also like they would also bounce and stuff like that, hit you in the forearms and all over the body as well. Um, and we're gonna end on this one the same day, August seventeenth. Josh Hamilton becomes only the sixth major leaguer to be intentionally walked with the bases loaded. Wow. Rays manager Joe Madden's decision to give the Rangers slugger uh, the run producing free pass in the ninth inning is successful when Tampa Bay goes on to win the game in Arlington seven to four. Now, do you know who the pitcher is? Do either of you know who the pitcher is? I probably you probably won't know from just looking at this picture. But uh, do you have any idea who the pitcher is? Not a clue. I say he. Ugh. Well, um, oh. so it is Grant oh ball four. So it's very appropriate, Grant. very okay. appropriate that a, a guy, a guy with the last name, name of ball four, um, through the intentional, <laughs> intentional pass. Thank I'm going to pat myself on the back for that one. Thank you. <laughs> Grant ball four. It's like Homer Bailey. Like it's, it's like kind of like a bad name to have, uh, Grant ball four. I always, I'm like, how are people not mentioning that? This, it's a reliever named Ball Four. <laughs> All right, so that is uh, this day in baseball. Yeah, wow. I, I, I wow. stunned, I stunned, and stunned silence. Everybody, thank you, thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a bow. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Thank you. Um, so let's do it. Let's go to baseball. Uh, this is not uh, baseball card pack wars, which I have up here. This is baseball card sharks. Um, yeah, Angelo uh, gets gets on the uh, gets a win oh, in there. It. I'm so excited! I didn't think it was going to count. Oh no, yeah, oh yeah. Because yeah, the guest, we had guests, right. you know. All right, all right. That's right, that's right. Yeah, you're in there. Now. Okay, it I counts. feel good now. All right, so um, so the, here's how uh, baseball card sharks uh, works. Uh, we're going to draw 11 cards and then we start on the left here. We go through and then uh, you level up and whoever gets the furthest wins. Uh, if we get all the way through, uh, we have actually have a tiebreaker, which I will uh, show to you in a second. So let me do this. Let me, uh, I'm going to add this and I'm going to remove that. Hey. And, and I'm going to do this and do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have, um, Oh, we, have a, we do. We have a box of Gypsy Queen uh, 2021 here. Here is the, um, if we uh, if we get through, we have uh, this box topper. I think there's three cards in here, if yep, I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so we're what we're going to do is, um, you know, we're going to uh, crack that open if, if we have a tie. Um, but since Angelo got uh, got on the board, I'm going to let him go first. We're going to play high-low, um, and we have eight cards here, so we need 11. So, so I'm going to pull these to the side. Angelo, you're going to go first. Uh, so question. Yo. What if he gets an autograph? There's two autographs in this box. There is. Yeah, if you, if you, you win the autograph, there okay. you go. There you I go. never do the elimination before, like we used to do in regular card pack wars. The leading yeah. player. Okay. Yeah. All right, got, so though. let's do it. Let's do it. And then the, the, the Gypsy Queen, we just, uh, uh, Angela, you you did a uh, uh, Stadium Wars with, with Gypsy Queen, correct? No, I did a Beer and Break with Gypsy Queen. Oh, you did, did Beer and Break, but we, uh, we were going to do it for the Stadium Wars, and then uh, we, that got changed. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so, so last week, yeah, you opened a Blaster Box. 
Yeah, we ended up doing uh, for Stadium Wars. We did Panini Select Baseball 2021. So. That's right. Okay, I'll catch up eventually. All right, uh, this is going to be fun because uh, it, ha- it only has the, um, the the first initial. So this is uh, Oliva, but I'm I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to guess and say Javier. <laughs> not not even sure. I think it's Jared. Jared Oliva. Jared. Okay, so then you can give me. Obviously, we know this one, uh, new, the new. Um, a uh, giant, Chris Bryant, mm-hmm. uh, Kenta Maeda, Andrew McCutcheon, Sean Murphy. Uh, we have an uh, insert, uh, the captain card of uh, Bryce Harper. So that goes to the side. Uh, is it uh, Monte Harrison? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I think so, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from Miami, uh, Juan Acevedo from the Cardinals. Second pack. Yeah, these are always these are some of my favorite cards. So um, I love the art on these. Yeah, the yeah, it's, it's it's really amazing. And we're looking for short prints and stuff like that. So we'll we'll try to point them out if we see them. Uh, Shurton Apostle. I actually know this one. Shurton Apostle. Uh, so that goes up here. Your bench is out. Uh, is it my frozen? Alex, uh, Bregman, Alex Bregman. Yep. Uh, Nico Horner. On the and, hot corner. And Carlos Carrasco. Let's see what else we got in here. Oh, here we go. Oh. <laughs> there it is. Wow. So Dean Kramer, on card autograph, rookie. Nice. There you go. Sweet. Playing for that. that. There you go. Oh, he gets that. You got that. Very good. Yeah. Is that numbered or anything? It is yeah, not. It looks like a base. Hey, right, but still, that's on card. Yeah. Nice. Very good. Oh, yeah. what, I love about, what I love about Gypsy Queen is all the autos are on card. So, oh, right on. That's wonderful. Yep. So let's put that up there. We, uh, Jorge Soler. Uh, is it? Uh, yeah, Carlos Hernandez. Cesar Hernandez. And uh, Seth Sons. Romero. Sorry. There you go. All right, so high low, so um, so what? Uh, so let's see what we got here. The number is this is number one. Okay, so in a series of three twenty, so we're up to three twenty. So this one is oh, we know uh, that good. One thirty eight. So one thirty eight, right there. So this Ooh. is Jared Oliva. So the Chris Bryant is it higher or lower than one thirty eight? Hmm. I'm going to go higher. And the answer is 187. Nicely done. Nice. Nice. Get some, uh, get some distance here. So 187, uh, going with the Kenta Maeda higher or lower. See, now is where it gets tough because it's impossible to tell. Yes. Direction it's going to go. Yeah. And you do have your bench card, so you can switch this out. Yeah, there's. I don't think there's really any strategy in that because it's it's hard to guess here. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go lower with Kenta. Okay. So lower than 187, it is 235. Wow. Yeah, this is a tough one because there's yeah, no stats on here to go. Yeah. So, but you did get the hey. uh, the Dean Kramer. Yeah. yeah, good. That's wonderful. Very good. There you go. Wonderful. What were you gonna say, Kevin? I was say, hey, great man. You got, you got, you got, you got. He's a real winner here already. Come on. Yeah. And right, it, it right out of the second, well, second pack. <laughs> it's where the, where the cards Ooh. are. The, that worked out nice. Yeah, there's two per, and there's only two per box. So very good. Yeah. All righty. So let's put those over there, Kevin. You're next. Got our two packs right there. All right. Yeah. Bring it on, brother. Let's let's do it. All right. Uh Kristen Pache, right? Yes, sir. Kristen Pache. Uh Dan Dan Bard, I believe is is uh his name. Uh not sure uh something uh D Johnson. I'm not sure of what who this is, but um I'm not sure of his first name, I should say. 
Well, Thank you can always look at the back. We need to cheat. But then again, we're going to see the numbers. So we can't do that. Uh, Daniel Johnson. Daniel. Daniel Johnson. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Sean Howard. or uh, It's not Ryan Howard. I know that one from the Phillies. It's not Mo <laughs> Howard. <laughs> Mo <laughs> Howard. Oh, Miggy. That's a, that's a nice one right there. And uh, Chad M mentioned earlier in the chat that, reminder, he's at 499 right now. Oh, that's right. Yeah. There. He's on the 500 watch. That's yep. cool. Tyler Glasnow. Yep. Okay. Uh, Manny Machado, watch your ankles. Uh, there's hey. the uh, autograph. Hey, Kramer. Dean Kramer. <laughs> no autograph, unfortunately, this time, Kevin. Sack and pack. Right. <clears throat> Again, these cards are so nice. Absolutely. It is just interesting to see that they would do that with the first initial and the last name. I've never yeah. really never seen that on, on cards. They've like always, that. yeah, they've always done that with a uh, Gypsy Queen. Yeah, I think that and, makes it really unique here. Yeah, and Ginter, Allen, and Ginter does last name only. Right, right. Oh yeah, I know. Sometimes you're like, uh, so like Joey Gerber, Joey Gerber. Okay, Charlie Blockman. Yes, sir. That's on your bench. Uh, Wilson Contreras for the Cubs. Right. On your bench, Blake Snell. On your All bench, right. uh, Aroldis Chapman. All right. Marco Gonzalez. Okay. Joe Adele. Ooh, Joe Adele. There's right. a nice one. Cool. Uh, and Max Freed. All right. All right. So Kristen Pache. All right. The number is out of 320, this is 124. All right, well, right in the, middle. The, odds are, the odds are telling me got to go higher. All right, higher than 124. And 64. Ah, jeez. <laughs> 64. Yeah, this one, these, these ones are harder when you're not doing the, there's no, the like, educated you're, guess. You're right, though, like, you got to play the, you got to play the odds with this. Yeah. So there's yeah. more, more numbers after. Yeah. Than before. So that's where it helped at least sit on the back 320 cards. But, you know, I mean, I would have said higher regardless in that situation. All right. Here are mine. I still might win. Yep. Oh, yeah. All I got to do it. I get, I got to get two, right? Yeah. You just got to get yeah. two. Jeez. Oh, my God. All right. We got the tiebreaker ready if necessary. Yes. Oh, that's right. We do have a tiebreaker. Yeah, for those who didn't watch the Hoppy Hour, what happened was we discovered that tie goes to the player because Angel actually tied twice. twice. Yeah, during twice. During the run last Saturday. Yeah. Interesting. Tie goes to the runner. Uh, it's, I, I'm not sure. If, I don't think it's Brad Just Garrett. It's Brad Garrett. Just say it's <laughs> Brad, Brad Garrett. It's Brad Garrett. Uh, David Peterson. David Peterson. Uh, M. White. Um I'm not sure what his first name is. I'll just Let's just say it. it's Michael Jai White. Yeah, that's, there you go. Tommy LaStella. Oh, nice. Ooh, uh, this is great. a uh, short print um, uh, variation of Roganet or Door. Um, I think this still has a number, correct? Right? Yeah, it does. I, I figured okay. it Oh, yeah. That's right. I was going to say, so you should uh, see if it's numbered. Like, we can't. Rookie Burroughs uh, from the Tigers. Uh, Ramon Laureano, mm -hmm. who, I, who I just found out today. I wasn't even aware of this, that he's... Uh, he was busted for PEDs this year. He was. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it was earlier this month. And uh, the recently returned uh, uh, fantasy uh, league member of mine, uh, Chris Sale. The Taylor. The Taylor, yes. That's a couple years ago. People might not know that yeah. reference anymore. <laughs> These uh, The packs are a little bit weird with Gypsy Queen, Michael, so it's easier if you open it from the bottom. It, it that's, what I, that's what I'm learning. Yeah, I figured as much. I'm just like, I have no patience. Uh, Josh Bell on my bench. Uh, Sunny Gray, Sunny Gray, Gray yeah. uh, Sandy Alcantara, All right? Let's see what else uh, you got in the back here. Aristides Okino, right? Uh, that goes out of here. Jared Walsh, right? All right, right on. Uh, Juan Segura, uh, is it Dalton Jeffries? Yep, there yep. you go. And Max Kepler, all right. Dalton, All right. Oh, oh, gosh. Gosh. oh boy. Let's see what you got here. Let's do it. All right. So uh, Brad Garrett, <laughs> uh, which is Don't actually Braxton is. Garrett. Braxton. Um, All right. So this is 277 out of Oh, man. That's that's a good start. Yeah. So I'm definitely going to go lower with uh, Dave Peterson. Where's everyone to say it's rigged? 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Ooh, 253. Ooh. Oh man. That's a that's a great card. That's a great card to get there for you for, to win this thing. No, I I I, I lost. Oh, I thought it was higher. I, I, I'm it is, sorry. It I, is I, higher. I said lower. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I thought you had two. Oh my god, I can't even read. No, I lost yeah, right away. Lower, yeah. Wow. Yeah, my it god. is. How close was that, too? That was close. Two fifty three, and what was the first one? Two twenty seven. Oh. Wow. Dang. Sorry. Wow, yeah. Angelo. Hot Angelo. streak. Angelo. The auto and the win. So we have yeah. time. We have time. Do you want to? You want to go again? We got the packs. You want to go for it, Angelo? Let's do it. Okay, let's, let's play, do let's, it. You know what? You know you are going to Vegas, so come on, get get some mojo yeah, going. Yeah, you gotta get that. That's right. All right, here we go. And I was like the fastest card <laughs> card shark wars ever because it's high yeah, number, I guess. Exactly. Hello, so Angelo. You said you said go from the bottom. Yeah, right, from the bottom. Way. A little bit easier. No, oh, that's not, no. Hey, these are. I think it's because I, I can't use both my hands. I think that's the no. that's why it's. Uh, Edwin Diaz, Evan White, this guy, <laughs> this little guy. Uh, is it Jake? Is it James? James. 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 Yep, James. Yep. Uh, Walker Bueller. Uh, Michael Chavez, Isaac Paredes. This is really testing my knowledge of all these players. Alex Kirilov. That's a good one. See, Alex Kirilov sounds we like can, a we can probably go without the bench, right? Since we filled it with eight. What? We, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. And if we need it, if we need it, we'll we'll pull it open. Okay. Oh, so, gotcha. Uh, yeah, that's a good call. Edwin. Edwin Unless Edwin you want to go to your bench. I don't think, I don't think anyone's going to go to the bench. Yeah. Yeah. Or do you, if you, well, we'll decide. What, what do you want to do? No, we'll we'll, st we'll stick with this because I'm not going to go okay. to the bend. It's not okay. You know. 44, 44. Oh, okay. good start. Higher, higher with Evan White and 44, 276. Woo! Nice. That's lower. Good call. Lower with the little guy, 276, 20. Of course, it's 20. Oh my gosh! Look at higher. This, like he He's getting some signs from Altuve here. <laughs> I heard that banging. Uh, you said higher? Higher. 293. Lower. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Lower with Walker Bueller. It is 70. Higher. <laughs> higher than 70 with Michael Chavez Thanks. here. 285. Oh, my Lower. goodness. <laughs> he didn't even need his bench. No kidding. Nope. He's like calling a shot here. Lower. Good. Lower with Isaac Paredes in 285, 87. Wow. Higher for the win. All right. For the win. For the well, uh, for the running the gauntlet. Yeah. yeah. Is what do you say? Higher than 87? Higher than 87. For the win. Five. Ooh. Oh, no. That's what we hey, all would have done. Hey, I, I went with the odds. So. Yeah, Good you job. did. Good job. So we got uh, four, uh, five, six, seven. You got seven. Uh, Good. Five, My, I distracted seven. you. I distracted you banging the glass. See, I distracted <laughs> you. <laughs> I didn't get to make my wisecrack. I was getting Alex Kirilov sounded like a guy who had been a Russian wrestler in the eighties. Oh, heck yeah. Like, totally good picture to a guy like that. You know, yeah. like, hey, I'm Alex Kirilov. Right. Heck yeah. Yeah. Everybody's going great. Everybody's loving the, loving the, ch uh, in the chat. Yeah. Thanks guys. Uh, definitely keep it coming. Uh, this is, so this is Kevin's pack. Uh, yes, Angela sir. made it, made it to the seventh spot. Man, made it to the top. Yeah. He's taking it to the top. Oye, Oye, como va? Carlos Santana. Hey, I'm Santana, man. Elvis. Oh, he hasn't left the building. He is here. Elvis Andrews right here. Wow, I got quite the musical pack so far here. Get your beers ready. Hey, we haven't had any brewers. Christian no. Yelich. We haven't done this in a while. Oh, I do it every week. <laughs> Don't worry. I keep track. <clears throat> Not that any excuse to drink. Austin Hayes. Nick Solak, 
that goes here. This is a, an insert of uh, Chris Bryant. All right. Um, uh, S words <laughs> for a hundred, oh, uh, Alex. Wait, S words. Okay. That's swords. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm like what? Boy, like that's the old SNL bit. I know. Uh, I was just like, that's wait, a what? super oh, cool. Yeah. What a great. Of course, it, it's Sean. It, yeah, yeah. Big famous titles. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Kebert Ruiz. Kebert. Uh, and Dax Cameron. Mike Cameron's son. Yep. Dad, right? Dad's not Dax. Or Dad's Cameron. Did I say Dax? Oh, Dad. Yeah, that's right. It's Dad's. It's Dad's. Dad's Cameron. I, I just heard uh, Gypsy Queen. 2021. These are cool cards. But the worst packs to open when <laughs> I don't have a dominant every, right hand. Every baker and, has struggled opening them. <laughs> yeah. Video. And a pressure's on. Cowboy Jack says Kevin washes out in two cards. <laughs> oh. Wow. Wow. Well, you know what? Michael and I both washed out in two cards. So that's true. That's true. Tommy right, Fam. Your bench is Clayton Kershaw. All right. Trevor Bauer. <laughs> <laughs> the un uh, now wow. the no Dodger pitcher. Unnamed, yeah. Two yeah, opposite Dodger. legacies. Uh Jeff McNeil. If always if always Joe Ryan moving that next card. Yes, yes. Or Joe Ryan. Oh, um, hang on, I'm hurting. Hang on. Oh, I'm in pain just looking at this card. Oh yeah. God. My, oh gosh. My, 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 really hurts. my, my thumb hurts uh just opening ah. that pack with him in it. Uh Giancarlo. Uh Alberto Mondesi. Yes. Uh, Dustin May and Jazz Chisholm. That's a good one. That's a yeah. real good one. Okay. All right. What what Santana got for me? All right, San Carlos Santana, starting off with a two twenty three. Okay, well that's that. You know, that's not good bad. Number. All right, let's go lower with uh, Elvis. Elvis Andrews lower than two twenty three one sixty. Oh, right in right, the middle. Right, Ooh, right, that's right. literally the middle card of the whole set here. Yep. Uh, all right. One. Hey, let's go to he who should not be named off the bench. Ooh. Ooh. I'm literally so, in the middle of the whole set, so let's see. Let's see what he's got for me. So Besides 160, the, uh, 160 being replaced with nice, nice move. Ooh, 25. Nice move. All right, let's go higher. He's only five away from Altuve, so. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's a, so Altuve was 20 the, got 25 the, the, question here. Is, the question is five what away from yes me. yes yeah, no. <laughs> good move Kevin. all right i i gotta go higher with yelly higher than 25 you got 192 all right take it nicely that's done good nicely done all right let's let's go lower is that austin hayes austin hayes lower right, than lower. 192 you got a 165 Gosh, ooh. Ooh, another middle card. All right, but at least I made it to the second row. All right, 165. All right, hang on, man, before you turn that over. Uh, I'm not turning it over. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying, before you go that, let's let's get let's get Clayton in there. All right, so we're going to replace let's, Austin Hayes let's with do, let's, Clayton Kershaw. So 165 is replaced with 156. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. All right, well, I guess let's... You literally just switched numbers, like just I know, flip numbers. I really did. <laughs> All right, let's go higher. Higher than one fifty six. I won't be surprised either way on this one. This is a coin flip. One seventy seven. Nice All move. Right. Dang it. Nice move. I was close. All right. Okay. Let's go lower. <clears throat> lower than one seventy seven. With yeah, the again, Kiebert it's, it's, Ruiz. It's all coin flips here. Seventy nine. All right. All wow. right. All right, let's see if we can keep this going. Let's go higher. Higher than 79 with the Dax Cameron. Daz. Daz. I said Dax again? Yes. Doesn't matter. Oh. Nine. Wow. I jinxed Angela, you. I, jinx, Angela, I jinxed you. Angela, you're in the lead still. All right. All right. I, well, I that was an effective you. use of the bench. I didn't think about leveraging the bench in that way. So yep. I lucked out. But yeah, my game plan with high low is 
what was really not to go to the bench, but yeah, there is value in having the bench. That's right. That's I'm right. Here, here, 160. I'm like, I live in the middle car. Right the whole the middle, set, yeah. like, what have I got yeah. to lose? It's not going yeah. to be that much better or worse, except that 165 not, or 156. It's just a shot in the dark at which one you pick. That's the, the only challenge. But Yeah. Anything in the middle, um, you know, you definitely, you just run the risk of getting a higher low car. So that's well, Michael. Know. What if I want to be stuck in the middle with you? Oh, stuck in oh. the middle with you. Oh, that's nice. All right, here we go. So, yeah, two rounds. Yeah, we did well on this one. Yeah. Yeah, this well, is... Well, Angelo uh, did. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, this is Garrett Crochet, right? Yep. Garrett, sure. Garrett yep. Crochet. Sure. Uh, hey. Wow, what? This guy's hey. in here? What? A <laughs> brewer. brewer. As Ryan brought... Wait, what? I'm dry. Drink for me, boys. <laughs> You're not like me? You don't have a backup? <laughs> I, I do. I, just, uh, I don't think I'm gonna finish it if I open it. So, oh, the Yasmani well, Devil. I got backup. Yasmani Grandal. Right. Uh, Kevin Bubik. Kevin. Right? Chris. 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 I say I didn't sound right. I just wasn't sure. Okay. Lance Lynn. <laughs> uh, Luis Arias. I miss your uh, your lucha intros of those guys. Yes. Charlie Morton. You said that way too way too well. You should have put your part of it. They're like Charlie, Charlie Marcus, Morton. Simeon. <laughs> Grand Marcus Simeon. Tell you it would have it would yeah. Marcus. <laughs> Mike Clevinger. Well yeah, yeah, he hasn't oh, been around this year either. There's no way to get that juror. It'd be Clevinger. <laughs> Ramil Tapia. There you go. Austin Meadows. <laughs> All right, let's uh, see what else you got. Here. Bellinger. Oh, we... Seeger. Jeffers. Lazardo. Jesus Lizard. All right. And uh, that Mickey guy. Moniac. Not Mickey Morandiniac? It is not. <laughs> okay. That's another, that's, that's uh, uh, like the, the, the Moniac. Is a good uh, wrestling name too. All right, Garrett Crochet. Uh, starting out at two eighty seven. That's that's wow. a good start. Nice. So I'm gonna go Very lower good. with Ryan Braun. You better don't let me down. Okay, uh -oh. come on, Ryan. Lower than two eighty seven, two oh four. Hey, that's good. Take it. Okay. That, that's oh. a little tough now. So I'm gonna yeah, go 115 lower. 115 cards, 116 cards that are higher. Good luck. Yeah, I'm gonna go lower with uh, Yasmani. Uh, 118. All right, let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna hire with. Uh, Ooh, Bubik all right. Here, you have to good start here. 88. <laughs> uh oh. 88. Uh -huh. Wow, Angelo. Yeah, Angelo. I'm on a hot hand. Three in three. a row. Three in a row, baby. In a row. Well, three in a row if you count Saturday. Yeah. That's what, yeah, three in a row. Nicely done. Yeah. Nicely done. All he's right. The, he's the Gypsy King now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bumbaleo. Can, can we mention again how incredible this mat is? Oh, it's. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's. Yep. I, I was I was really happy to get it. Thank you, Angelo, for finding. Uh, uh, we we uh, theoretically we should give a plug, but we're not going to give plugs until they plug yep. us. How about that? Exactly. <laughs> and I was thinking. I was thinking about go. reaching out. And, 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 hey, thinking about reaching look, out, and getting an affiliate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll we'll do that, and then if they if they do that, then we'll we'll plug them. But it looks gorgeous, go. looks beautiful, there and go. uh, I'll be debuting <laughs> my mat on uh, Saturday's edition of Beer and Break. So yeah, I yeah, well. definitely. Thanks, guys, uh, in the chat. Uh, we definitely appreciate uh, you sticking in there with us. Uh, let me get rid of this one. Get rid. Banned from studio. Shocking. Oops. Jack says he's drunk. Shocking. That almost never happens. That almost never happens. All right, so let's do some baseball trivia to close it all out. Uh, we definitely want you in the chat to participate. And uh, uh, no Googling. Um, uh, let us know what you know, and, and if you know this, uh, you definitely impress us. So Mariano Rivera is the all-time save leaders for the Yankees. Who is in second place? Mm. Who is in There's second place? My, 
I got two names in my head. Let me see how many are on this list. All right. Let's go with oh, Rich oh, Goose Gossage. Oh, yeah. Right. Sparky Lyle, Dave Rigetti, or Aroldis Chapman. Aroldis Chapman. One of them, I completely like when I saw the like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, and two, the two I thought of were up there. So this is this is a tough one. This is a tough one. <sighs> Angelo, any, any thoughts? I'm surprised all this is one of the options because I didn't even have him in mind. The well, yeah, I remember Mario was there for so long. Yeah, you know what I mean? One, the, the, the one name I have in mind uh, that I had in mind is up there, but then now another name popped up that is causing me to second guess. Yeah, I, I feel like the name that, that, that made you question is the same one as me. Yeah. Um, and because I trust both mine's and Kevin's intuition, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with the one that popped up that, I com that completely slipped my mind because – Growing up in the Bay Area, I didn't yep. I didn't necessarily correlate his name to being a Yankee, uh, yep. but rather uh, a member of the coaching staff of the Oakland Athletics, and that's Dave Rigetti. Nicely done. You know that that almost hurts my feelings. You're going with that because I was like, I saw him. Like, oh my gosh, it's probably Rigetti. Be, you know, because the two famous names are Goose and Sparky, but. They did play on other teams. Yeah, and Goose, was the, was, Goose was the name I had in my mind when it popped. When when Goose for sure. Went, yeah, but Goose because earlier you saw Go Goose when we you know when he struck out um, Pete Rose in that game, but he obviously wasn't a Yankee anymore. Yeah. He played Padres. on the Padres then, and he also played on I believe the White Sox at some. Started point. with the White Sox. Yeah. yeah, so I don't remember yeah. how long he was with them. Sparky Law is another guy who was with the Yankees for a while, but he was pitching in an era where saves weren't as much of a thing. So. That's why I'm almost. I might actually have to agree with you with the with the Dave Rigetti because he was a, he was their closer for a good seven or eight years there. Yeah, but you want to someone else? The, they put in the comments, "Goose replace Sparky." So no, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, Bubble Pug. So, going with, it's funny. Uh, I think we got. Am I allowed to agree with Angelo, or should I just say Goose just to pick someone different? <laughs> no, I'm on yeah. a hot streak. So I'm gonna go Dave Rigetti. Rigetti. Exactly. Yeah, and he's going to Vegas, so he's gonna uh, get yeah, some get some of that agree. winning way. Yeah, and uh, you know our our resident uh, New York Ray spaghetti, uh, our Brooklyn Brooklynite uh, Rigetti spaghetti, uh, Cowboy Jack going with Dave Rigatoni <laughs> Rigetti, <laughs> uh, Chad M going with uh, John Wetland, uh, which I didn't think was a choice, but uh, uh, we'll definitely okay. respect it. And um, um, yeah, Nikki guesses Dave Rigetti. All right, so uh, well let's let's uh, let's let everybody know Rigetti spaghetti. Nice yep. job, Nikki. There you go. Yeah. Good job, everybody. And, uh, and then, and so, so looking at at this, um, when I when I looked at at uh, Rigetti's stats, it's it's actually pretty. He had a really uh, really good career. He's good. He's really good. Yeah, eighty two and seventy nine. Um, a three point four six ERA. Uh, one thousand one hundred and twelve strikeouts. Two hundred and fifty two total saves. Um, with the uh, Yankees, he had uh, well Mariano Rivera. This is nuts. Mariano Rivera had 652 saves, so no one's touching him, right? <laughs> Most all time. Dave Rigetti, 224. <laughs> uh, Rich Gossage, Rich Goose Gossage, 151. Sparky Lyle, yeah. 141. Chapman, 137. That surprised me that he actually has as many as he does, and he well every day he's still climbing. Um, and then the name, um, the names. Actually, yeah. uh, I'm going to give it to Chad M. John Wetland, number nine on this list. Wow, seventy four. Nicely done. Uh, the other people <laughs> I've never heard. At number six, Johnny Murphy, one hundred and four. Never heard of him. Uh, Steve, don't call me Jamie Farr, uh, was seventy eight. Uh, Joe Page, seventy six, and Lindy McDaniel with uh, fifty eight. So, um, but yeah, the, that uh, name getting... Lindy Rick McDaniel rings a bell. But yeah. And yeah. also, I, I I I'm pretty sure I said the Oakland A's. I meant coach for the San Francisco Giants. Right, yeah, right, right, right. No, I knew. I don't know why I said that. the I don't know why I said the A's. Well, Bay Area, Bay Area. Yeah. So it, it, he he but was he was that, he was with them for a while. For a he was right. okay. So so as a player, like, he was with like the Yankees from '79 to '90. He He's with the Giants Bay. from '91 to '93. 
one season with the Athletics, went to the Blue Jays in '94, oh. White Sox in '95, and then oh, a I didn't coach. That long. He was a coach with them for 17 years, yeah. uh, wow. from 2000 to 20, 2017. Yep. Wow. So, and then he he's one of, he's one of your favorites, actually, Kevin. He was the AL uh, Rollades relief man in '86 and '87. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> that's, you know, they need to bring that award was, back. That's was that the was awesome that the, the was that the trophy like shaped yes. like a fire helmet? Oh, yeah, as a, a fire great, helmet, right? Great, and great this is trophy. something this is something nobody talks about. Pitched a no hitter on July fourth, nineteen eighty three. Yeah. Yep. Wow, that's right. Yep. Okay, so uh, let's go to question two. Great, great job, everyone. Who is the all-time saves leader Ooh. for the St. Louis Cardinals? Come on. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you know it already? Do you, do you well, know? I mean, there's there's a name that – there's actually, there. well, no, because I can almost flip a coin on two names, kind of think of it. Okay. So your choices are Lee Smith, Todd Worrell, Bruce Suter or Jason Isringhausen? Wow, that's, I forgot about Isring, Isringhausen being a closer with them. Me and Todd Morell was definitely a guy from the 80s who he probably the one who replaced, uh, how would you replace Suter, I believe? Yeah, uh, you know what? Uh, 82, yeah, no, didn't replace him. He was, yeah, no, no. I know that's how I say it. My, he was at the, he was at like the beginning, like 89, 90. Yeah. Because that, yeah, because is, that he wasn't on those teams. This is a teams. tough one. He this wasn't on the World tough, Series teams. This, this is definitely a tough one, though. Yeah. Because instantly I thought of one of these guys and then, and then like, oh, I got this. I was like, oh, wait, there's that other guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, shoot. Yeah, the Cardinals have had some really great uh, relievers to play for them. Dennis Eckersley, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Lee Smith, obviously. They actually had, if you can believe it, they actually had Raleigh Fingers at one time. Uh, it was actually during, like, when, um, I think when they, they, all the Bruce Suter stuff, when they got Bruce Suter, they actually had Raleigh Fingers and actually passed him on to the uh, uh, Milwaukee uh, Brewers. Um, and uh, uh, there's there's been... Yeah, some some great uh, relievers that have gone through St. Louis, yeah. but some but but not a lot of them have had all their dominance with the Cardinals. Right. Exactly. Yeah, like all they, all those names, but the time that they spent with the Cardinals was either in the twilight of their career or they didn't spend enough time with them. Yeah. Um, for like Bruce Suter, it was like the the height of his career as well. Mm -hmm. This is a this one's tough. Yeah, because um, Lee came to me instantly, but then I forgot he also did play on the Cubs too. Lee, Lee is the one that came to me. Lee is the one that came to me instantly yeah. as well. But I did have Suter in my mind as well. And then Morel's um, tough because if I remember right, he went to the Dodgers after a few seasons as well. Yep. Yeah. So this is, this, this is good. This is a good one. Good one here. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm going to rule out Isringhausen. I don't. I don't think he's probably even in the top ten. Um, that's a that's a dangerous one. I'm like, yeah. Ah. I'm like he's here um, for a reason. I thought they're like, oh, they'll tell me he snuck it out, getting like 127 or something like that. You know, so <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm looking in the comments, and uh, you know, um, I had already picked Rigetti, and and Nikki went with Rigetti, uh, and also Bubble Pug is going with Suter. So I'm gonna go with I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go with Nikki and with uh, with Bubble Pug and Cowboy Jack, and go with Suter Home Wine. Man. I, I, it's funny because I was like, I want to say Suter. I'm like, everyone's saying Suter. I feel like I should just disagree just, just to have fun with it. Well, but, Chad uh, M is saying Lee Smith. And there's, there's, yeah. and this I know, is, I know. It's probably, but, uh, I, I, I'm just saying, but my, I'm thinking it is Bruce Suter. Yeah. My, 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 my assumption, and Mike will give the details when we see who the, uh, what the answer is. But my assumption is it's within 20 to 30, at least within 20. In, in the, the final count. So it's going to be pretty Yeah, close. You know what? Let's all be a happy family together. I'll say Bruce there. We all, we all win together or we all triumph. <laughs> we all triumphly fail together. All right. So some good guesses, some good rationalization of this. This is but, a tough one. And, yeah. and, and the only reason I know this is because I'm a Cardinal fan. Yes, sir. And, um, and, it's um, Jason Israel, it's and I, I, I kind of, I, I was kind of leading the witness when I said like, um, who actually, um, you know, a lot of these other guys have been 
uh, kind of not not part timers, but but they not uh, in their careers part timers with yeah. the Cardinals. The only one that came up with uh, with the Cardinals and actually spent a lot of time there was Jason was. Jason Isringhausen. I, I thought yeah. he came up with the Mets, didn't he? He did, yeah. but That's he spent a lot. He spent a lot of time with the Cardinals in that middle uh, part of it. So like, I, See, it when was you're like saying the, everything now, I'm like it's Isringhausen, isn't it? I was like, I kind of was like rang a bell. Like this is this is this is like. So Adrian Housen has 217 saves. Oh, Lee wow. Smith second on that with 160. Oh. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Warrell third, 129. Bruce Suter 127. Uh, Trevor Rosenthal, who I thought yeah. was was a, a, almost a lock to uh, be pushing for potentially you know, like going for the all time record, yeah. uh, and just petered out just a couple seasons. And, uh, oh, nah. another, an, another guy who actually, I, he did, he did really well. And I actually, what I watched him, um, if I could watch somebody's career, uh, self-destruct, it would be this guy. He's number six on the list. Ryan Franklin. Oh my God. They signed oh into this, gosh. they signed into this, this, uh, incredible contract. <laughs> And uh, he, he somehow he forgot how to pitch. <laughs> Michael, did he come from uh, the Mariners? I want to say that he, 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 something like that. Uh, that are the Padres. Because uh, I'm but, almost positive I actually saw him play in the California League in like 1990. Oh, wow. How interesting. Yeah. I, I, I'm thinking that's right. Because I'm trying to Ryan Franklin and Ringo Bell. I think that's accurate. I think I saw him in Riverside, California. <laughs> yeah. And and Trevor Rosenthal was was still playing as of a couple years ago. Uh, yeah. Mike Matheny loved Trevor Rosenthal, and actually, and then he had uh, Tommy John came back, wasn't the same, but like he was on the Royals. He actually had a little a little blip on the radar. I think he was even signed by potentially the Padres, um, but then he kind of fizzled out. But um, he was he 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 made a bit of a comeback. Um, seven and eight on this list are interesting. Dennis Eckersley uh, and Lindy McDaniel uh, was, with with. Lindy's on two lists. Wow. Six, 66. Yeah. Um, and then this is awesome. Uh, and, uh, it, it says number nine, but there's three people on it. Uh, tied for 59 is a guy named Al Brazel. Never heard of him. Joe Horner. I think I've heard of him. But the mad Hungarian Al yeah. Hrabowski wow. is uh, right. I 59. So Jason. Definitely, Adrian, a, definitely it, a Hall of Famer potentially for the BBB. You yes, know, yeah, yeah, absolutely, team. absolutely. So Jason Isringhausen had a really awesome uh, career uh, as a pitcher, uh, 51 and 55, uh, 3.64 ERA, 830 strikeouts, th exactly 300 s total saves. Um, he came up with the Mets in 95 through 97, uh, played again in 99. Uh, went to the A's, uh, 99 right. through 2001. And then he had his uh, probably um, – fr all those saves were from 2002 to 2008, so the wow. six-year span. Wow. Jeez. So, yeah, and then he went to the Rays and back to the Mets. He actually finished his career in 2012 as an Angel. There you go. Yep. So, um, yeah, he was the NL Lee's, uh, a saves leader in 2005. Uh, uh, four, sorry. Wow. So, yeah, so there you go. Um, Y'all learned something there. Definitely. And uh, a, a great pick. He reminds me of, um, oh gosh, uh, Billy Wagner is a, yeah. is a guy who's like, yeah. who you remember hearing about, but he's actually a better reliever than you remembered. He was actually oh, really yeah. good. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. One, not one of those guys who kind of stood out. All right, so that is um, that is what we have for you this week. If you'd like to become a Patreon uh, supporter and help us out here at the Bear Basketball Blog, check out our Patreon page. I also want to make mention of one thing uh, before I'm going to actually uh, solo myself. Um, tomorrow is August 18th. Uh, there's a very uh, uh, I have someone who's very uh, I, I want to say very special to me. He's, he's he was a comedian named Brody Stevens. And if you look up Brody Stevens, um, he, he was basically the comics comic. Uh, comics loved him, but if you were probably someone who watched him, you probably didn't get him. Or uh, But if you did, if you really got him, um, you really uh, gravitated toward him. He had a very unique style. I look him up, Brody Stevens. Um, he actually played at Arizona State University. He was a baseball player, huge baseball fan. If you look on our uh, video page for the Beer Baseball blog, I actually go through uh, Arizona. I go to a Arizona State Sun Devils game, 
And uh, I, um, I said that I dedicated uh, everything that I do here at the Beer Baseball blog to Brody Stevens. Uh, Brody took his life a couple years ago, and um, and it's um, it, it was it was uh, very tragic because Brody uh, suffered with a lot of mental illness. Um, one of the things that 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 he um, he always said, uh, I, I I grew up, I, I didn't grow up, I, I actually grew up in Arizona, but I actually came to Los Angeles, and uh, my phone number was had an eight one eight area code. And Brody Stevens, if you watch him and you and you watch anything he does, he was eight one eight till I die, and he was about the San Fernando Valley. He was all about like everything, and and uh, he could rattle off baseball statistics as easily as he could tell you. Um, he could like. Kevin, where are you from? Anaheim, California. You have to go up the one, the 105 to the eight. You know, he would just he could rattle off stuff. He was had a, a, an amazing memory, and um, so eight one eight is a special number. Tomorrow is August eighteenth, um, and this is a long way of saying um, you know I'm someone who has benefited from um, from really embracing mental health and um, and getting help and helping me uh, get through a lot of stuff that was uh, that's been tough for me over my life. And uh, if I can encourage one person uh, to take their mental health seriously, especially with all this COVID BS, especially with all, you know, all the pressures in life, please get the help that you need. Uh, reach out to, to us on social media. I will definitely uh, uh, help in any way we can. Um, you know, so the, and, and, and mental health is very near and dear to my heart. And, uh, and, uh, life is short. Take care of yourself. 818 till I die. Brody Stevens. Enjoy it. So that's, uh, that's my shirt. That's what I'm all about. So sorry. Um, just want to get that in while I could. Great. Now we're supposed to do plugs after that. <laughs> yeah, please, please. Please now, do now, plugs. You, you, I, mean, you, I mean, you talked about, um, you know, tomorrow being significant and it was announced over the weekend and I, I saw it in, come up in my news feed that tomorrow is going to be Brody Stevens day. So, uh, announced by uh, the city of Los Angeles. So yeah. there's actually going to be a, yeah. there's actually going to be a dedication ceremony tomorrow at 2 PM, um, at the site of Brody's bench in Reseda park. So if you yes. guys are local to, um, the Valley, I definitely encourage you guys to go out there and, um, and, uh, uh, visit that and, and, um, take a time to, um, you know, um, hold an in memoriam of Brody Stevens and, you know, the, the outpouring of the pro wrestling, uh, and, uh, comedy community upon his passing was definitely overwhelming. And, um, you know, he was, uh, um, you know, definitely passionate about, you know, all things, uh, baseball as well. So, uh, Michael, you know, couldn't have said it better, better myself. So thanks. Thank you for thanks. That up. I, yeah. I hope I didn't ramble, but, uh, yeah, I no. said, like I said, it, it's, uh, um, mental health is something that, that, that we all need to take really super seriously and we don't talk about it enough. And, um, it's one thing that, that I put off for a long time. So, um, not to bring it down. This is why we do this. I hang it's out a- with my friends. We, we, uh, we drink beer and talk baseball. So this is how I get through. Uh, week by week, we've done this for 68 weeks. This is my therapy session every week, and I get to I get to flex my knowledge and all my nerdiness uh, with my friends. So uh, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, please, I, and I, and I'm I'm gonna force you to shill right now. Well, look, here, 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 go ahead, here. Angelo. I got some stuff, so go ahead and go, Angelo. So, so here's here's a great way to 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 bring the room up a little bit, if you will. Uh, whenever I'm feeling sad, you know what I do sometimes when I'm feeling sad is open baseball cards. You know when else I open baseball cards? Each and every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on the beer and break. Uh, yeah, this yeah. week, uh, I'm going to be opening up some cards. Uh, go back to check out last week's episode where I opened up some 2021 Gypsy Queen baseball. Uh, and uh, we have some great content coming down here in the pipeline. Uh, Kevin and I uh, spent the afternoon a long afternoon. <laughs> yeah, <just kidding. laughs> at, Three and a half uh, hours yeah. at like a minor league game yeah, on Sunday. At, uh, at Storm Stadium in Lake Elsinore, California. As he took on the Visalia Rawhide, oh, and uh, we um, and uh, we filmed another edition of Pack War Stadium Series, uh, featuring uh, one of my uh, old friends Isaac, who I talked to a little bit about uh, his baseball uh, hat collection as well. And uh, this upcoming weekend, uh, I think the, the, the guys mentioned it a couple times, I'll be in Vegas uh, Saturday and Sunday. 
I'll be in attendance for SummerSlam this weekend, um, where I'll be filming a another edition of Pack Wars Stadium Series, uh, a wrestling edition uh, with uh, friends of the show, uh, Big Teach 45 and Mark DeRegula. So stay tuned for that. Right on, right on. Kevin. All right. You know, this is like a good mental health session for all of us. If this is not enough for you, if you need more of the three of us and you haven't seen it yet, if you have a spare, I don't know, three and a half, four hours in your life. Legit. Legit. That's how <laughs> we had a hoppy hour on Saturday with uh, two wrestlers out of the Vancouver area, uh, Daniel Maccabe and Alan the Big Hurt Jepson. They came on and we literally talked for almost four hours about <laughs> beer baseball a long edition of card sharks it was really long you know we played two rounds and i think we it took long it took faster than it took us to play one round yeah, yeah but yeah. uh it was a really awesome show like we i talked about pro wrestling awesome. we've gone this long and no one seemed to care you know what i mean yeah we even had uh daniel who doesn't drink alcohol he even got like a non-alcoholic beer to join in with us so that was a really good time and you know something else that actually is really good if you're having a hard time in life Get yourself, bring more humor into your life. You know, there's two, and you know, a good way to do it. Look up Jack of the Joke Man, Martling. Call us his joke line. It's 516 9221. And I have something I need to tell Angelo Trinidad very specifically. Angelo, do you need more humor in your life? Uh, always. He's like, uh, <laughs> all right. Well, here's what you need to do Saturday night, unfortunately, at 9 p.m. Jack and the Joke Man Martling is at the Plaza Hotel in downtown Las Vegas. Wow. <laughs> no way. I saw that today and I, and I popped. I'm like, oh, I wish it was later than 9 o'clock. He's there Friday and Saturday at 9 o'clock at the Plaza Hotel in downtown oh, Las Vegas. Know. For those of you yeah. in Vegas, you want to see some see some uh, some jokes, I'll say that. Yeah, That's hilarious. Jokes. That is You know, awesome. go check it out. I'll call the joke line for free <laughs> instead of buying a ticket. <laughs> there well, you go. There you go. Or look Again, him up on Twitter. He, he posts jokes in there all the time. Yeah, yeah. Again, thank you guys. You've all made this such a um, such a, a great uh, therapeutic session, and uh, uh, we enjoy bringing it to you every week um, and expand on our nerdiness and our love for craft beer and baseball. Join us next Tuesday for another edition of Craft Beer and Curveballs with Angelo Trinidad, Kevin Lyon, and myself. Uh, we will see you next week. Good night, everyone. Take care.